Chapter Four of Among the Night People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Chapter Four, The Timid Little Groundhog. It was not often that the little groundhogs were left alone in the daytime. Before they were born, their mother had been heard to say she had her opinion of any groundhog who would be seen out after sunrise. Mr. Groundhog felt in the same way, and said if he ever got to running around by daylight, like some of his relatives, people might call him a woodchuck. He thought that anyone who ate twigs, beets, turnips, young tree bark, and other green things from sunset to sunrise ought to be able to get along until the next sunset without a lunch. He said that any groundhog who wanted more was a pig. After the baby groundhogs were born, matters were different. They could not go out at night to feed for themselves, and their stomachs were so tiny and held so little at a time that they had to be filled very often. Mr. Groundhog was never at home now, and the care all fell upon his hard-working wife. "'You know, my dear,' he had said, "'that I should only be in the way if I were to stay at home, "'for I am not clever and patient with children as you are. "'No, I think I will go away and see to some matters "'which I have rather neglected of late. "'When the children are grown up and you have more time to give me, "'I will come back to you.' "'Then Mr. Groundhog trotted away to join a party of his friends, "'who had just told their wives something of the same sort.' and they all went together to the farmer's turnip patch and had a delightful time until morning mrs groundhog looked after him as he trotted away and wished that she could go too he looked so handsome with the moonlight shining down on his long thick reddish fur and showing the black streak on his back where the fur was tipped with gray he was fat and shaky with a baggy skin and when he stopped to sit up on his haunches and wave his paws at her and comb his face fur, she thought him just as handsome as he had been in the early spring when they first met. That had been in a parsnip patch where there was good feeding until the farmer found that the groundhogs were there and dug the rest of his vegetables and stored them in his cellar. Such midnight meals as they had eaten there together! Mrs. Groundhog said she never saw a parsnip afterward without thinking of their courtship. She had been as handsome as he, and there were many other groundhogs who admired her. But now she was thin and did not have many chances to comb her fur with her forepaws. She could not go with him to the turnip patch because she did not wish to go so far from her babies. Thinking of that reminded her to go into her side hill burrow and see what they were doing. Then she lay down and let them draw the warm milk from her body. While they were feeding, she felt of them and thought how fast they were growing. It would be only a short time before they could trot around the fields by themselves and whistle shrilly as they dodged down into their own burrows. Ah, said she, this is better than turnip patches or even parsnips. When they had finished, their mother left them and went out to feed. She had always been a hearty eater, but now she had to eat enough more to make the milk for her babies. She often thought that if groundhog babies could eat anything else, their father might have learned to help feed them. She thought of this especially when she saw the great horned owl carrying food home to his son and daughter. It is what comes of being four-legged, said she, and I wouldn't be an owl for anything, so I won't grumble. After this, she was more cheerful. When she left the burrow, she always said, I am going out to feed, and I shall not be gone very long. Don't be afraid, for you have a good burrow, and it is nice and dark outside. The children would cry, And you will surely come home before sunrise. Surely, she always answered, as she trotted away. Then the children would rest happily in their burrow nest. But now Mrs. Groundhog was hungry, and it was broad daylight. She knew that it was because her children grew bigger every day and had to have more and more milk. This meant that she must eat more, or else when they wanted milk there would not be enough ready. She knew that she must begin to feed by day as well as by night, 
and she was glad that she could see fairly well if the sun were not shining into her eyes. Children, said she to them, just as they finished their morning lunch, I am very hungry, and I am going out to feed. You will be quite safe here, and I want you to be good while I am gone. The young groundhogs began to cry and clutch at her fur with their weak little paws. Oh, don't go, they said. Please don't go. We don't want to stay alone in the daytime. We're afraid. I must, said she, or I will have no milk for you. And then you wouldn't have me lie here all day too hungry to sleep, would you? No, said they. But you'll come back soon, won't you? Yes, said she. And she shook off their clinging paws and poked back the daughter who caught on again and trotted away as fast as she could. It was the first time that she had been out by daylight, and everything looked queer. The colors were too bright, and there seemed to be more noise than usual, and she met several people whom she had never seen before. She stopped for a minute to look at an oven bird's nest. The mother bird was inside, sitting there very still and brave, although she was much frightened. "'Good morning,' said Mrs. Groundhog. I was just admiring your nest. I have never seen it by daylight. Good morning, answered the oven bird. I'm glad you fancy my nest, but I hope you don't like to eat meat. Meat, answered Mrs. Groundhog. I never touch it. And she smiled and showed all her teeth. Oh, exclaimed the oven bird. I see you don't, for you have gnawing teeth, rather like those of the rabbits. Then she hopped out of the nest and let Mrs. Groundhog peep in to see how the inside was finished, and also to see the four speckled eggs which lay there. "'It is a lovely nest,' said Mrs. Groundhog, "'and those eggs are beauties. But I promised the children that I would hurry. Good-bye.' She trotted happily away, while Mrs. Ovenbird settled herself upon her eggs again, and thought what a pleasant call she had had and what an excellent and intelligent person Mrs. Groundhog was. All this time the children at home were talking together about themselves, and what their mother had told them. Once there was a long pause, which lasted until the brother said, I'm not afraid, are you? Of course not, said they. Because there isn't anything to be afraid of, said he. Not anything, said they. "'And I wouldn't be afraid, anyway,' said he. "'Neither would we,' answered the sisters. There was another long pause. "'She said we'd be just as safe as if it were dark,' said the big sister. "'Of course,' said the brother. "'And she said she'd come back as soon as she could,' said the second sister. "'I wish she'd come now,' said the smallest sister. There was another long pause. "'You don't suppose anybody would come here just to scare us, do you?' asked the second sister. "'See here,' said the brother. "'I wish you'd quit saying things to make a fellow afraid.' "'You don't mean that you are frightened,' exclaimed the three sisters together. And the smallest one added, "'Why, you are, too. I can feel you tremble.' "'Well, I don't care,' said the brother. "'I'm not afraid of people, anyhow. "'If it were only dark, I wouldn't mind.' "'Oh, are you afraid of the daylight, too?' cried each of the sisters. "'So am I.' Then they all trembled together. "'I tell you what let's do,' said the smallest sister. "'Let's all stop looking toward the light end of the burrow, "'and cuddle up together and cover our eyes and make believe it's night.' They did this and felt better. They even played that they heard the few noises of the night time. A crow caught outside, and the brother said, "'Did you hear that owl?' That was the great horned owl, the one who had to hatch the eggs, you know. When another crow cawed, the smallest sister said, Was that his cousin, the screech owl? Yes, answered the big sister. He is the one who used to bring things for the great horned owl to eat. So they amused themselves and each other, and really got along very well, except when, once in a while, they opened their eyes a little crack to see if it were not getting really dark. Then they had to begin all over again. At last their mother came, and what a comfort it was! How glad she was to be back, and how much she had to tell them! All about the oven bird's nest, and the four eggs in it, and how the oven birds spent their nights in sleeping, 
and their days in work and play. I wonder if the little oven birds will be scared when they have to stay alone in the daytime, said the small sister. They would be more scared if they had to stay alone at night, said their mother. At night, exclaimed all the young groundhogs. Why, it is dark then. They might be afraid of the darkness, said their mother. Then the children laughed and thought she was making fun of them. They drank some milk and went to sleep like good little groundhogs. But even after he was half asleep, the big brother laughed out loud at the thought of the oven-bird babies being scared at night. He could understand anyone's being afraid of daylight, but darkness? End of chapter 4